Good night. Slam Jam Bam, number one in the nation, the Flying Alina. They're going to try to throw the baseball pass to one of their great jumpers. Remember, the clock doesn't stop. And they're touching it. room in the press room and with short kill five seconds to go fighting Illini basketball part by Hardy they're out to win you over by True Value Hardware, your store of first choice. By your local Super Chevy dealers. In Central Illinois, we drive Chevy. And by Taco Bell in Champaign-Urbana, Rantoul, and Charleston. Good evening, everybody. I'm Steve Kelly, and welcome to Fighting Illini Basketball, a tribute to a special season. You know, the 1988-89 basketball season will go down as the best ever at the University of Illinois. Some people may argue that point, but the facts are there. 31 victories, a regional championship, and a trip to the Final Four. More importantly, we saw a group of young men who not only excelled on the basketball court, but displayed a love for each other. A love that enabled them to help each other through some very tough times during the long basketball season. The Illini turned in one courageous performance after another, and that would have not been possible if this group of coaches and players didn't have those strong feelings for one another. Coming up in the next hour, we'll take you through the highs and the lows of the Illini basketball season in our tribute to a special season. Well, that special season began with a bunch of December blowouts as the Fighting Illini rang up a dozen non-conference victories. Lou Henson's team won its 10th straight Illini Classic title with senior Lowell Hamilton being named the turning most valuable player. But perhaps the two most impressive non-conference performances came back to back in late December. The first of those performances came at the arena in St. Louis, where the Illini met the Missouri Tigers before a sold-out crowd of almost 19,000 fans. It was the annual Bragging Rights Classic, and the 10th-rated Tigers were determined to put a stop to a five-game losing streak at the hands of the Illini. And it looked like that would happen in a big way as Missouri ran out to an 18-point lead midway through the first half. But the Illini scored the final 11 points of the half to get back into the contest, and the game was close the rest of the way, with Illinois staying unbeaten with an exciting 87-84 decision over Missouri. Kenny Battle led the orange and blue attack with 28 points. Since I came out, I was very aggressive on offense as well as defense, and I, you know, I'm a senior now, so I had to show some leadership, and I picked up the guys, and they, t you know, they followed. He's the type of basketball player that I tell our players that we respect everybody, every team, every coach. But you really have to, uh, there's, a, there's a little more for a guy like that because he plays hard. I, you know, he's got the right last name. Well, it really shows us, you know, what we can do when we come out and work hard. We give 110%. Good time was had by all at the arena in St. Louis. Certainly one of the finest offensive games, if not the finest of the season, was turned in by the Illini three nights later in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where the orange and blue routed the LSU Tigers 127 to 100. The LSU fans left the Maravich Assembly Center wondering, who were those guys? The Illini came out hot and stayed that way as they shot a season high 68% from the field while scoring a school record 127 points. They also ran up the most points by an opponent ever in Baton Rouge. Tiger coach Dale Brown later thanked his good friend Lou Henson for not running up the score on his young team, saying the Illini could have easily scored 160 points on that particular night. Kendall Gill led the way with 27, but everybody got into the act. 
Uh, they're not uh, many times uh, during the year or during uh, the past decade, I guess, that we've had a team go on the road and play like that. Uh, we were outstanding offensively. Uh, defensively, we struggled a little bit in the first half. In the second half, we dominated them defensively. Uh, I was going back and trying to look at some of the good victories on the road, but uh, I don't think we have played that well in the years I've been at Illinois. Well, Illinois wrapped up the non-conference season with wins over Tulsa, Georgia Tech, and Hawaii to win the 25th annual Rainbow Classic in Honolulu. The Illini stood 12-0 heading into the Big Ten season. We'll take a look at the conference race and more when a special season continues. After ripping through 12 non-conference opponents, it was time for the real business to begin. The Illini entered the Big Ten season as one of the three favorites to win the title. Michigan and Iowa were also highly regarded as the conference season began. The Fighting Illini opened the Big Ten season January the 7th at the Assembly Hall in Champaign against Judd Heathcote's Michigan State Spartans, who were off to a pretty impressive 9-2 start themselves. But a 16 to nothing spurt in the first half put the Illini ahead to stay, although Michigan State stayed close until the final minutes. Kendall Gill and Nick Anderson each scored 21 points as the Illini opened the conference season with a 71-54 win over Michigan State. Following a 23-point win over Wisconsin, the Illini, then ranked second in the nation, took on number six Michigan in an early season Big Ten showdown in Champaign. Illinois handed the Wolverines their 10th straight loss at the Hall, making them 0 for the 80s in Champaign. Gill led five players in double figures with 26, as the Illini beat Michigan in the first of what would be three meetings on the season. The final was 96 to 84. I've been in the league 16 years, and that's uh, maybe the best, or the only team I think that might have been better is the 76 Indiana team. That's a great basketball team. This team never gives up and uh, never gets down on each other, and uh, I think if we continue to do that, we should be pretty good. Certainly a sign of times to come. A 75-70 win over Northwestern set the stage for one of the most memorable games in Illini basketball history. It was a non-conference matchup with 20th-rated Georgia Tech and an Illini victory on this Super Bowl Sunday would keep the orange and blue undefeated and propel them to the top spot of the national ratings for the first time in 36 years. It didn't look good early for the fighting Illini as Bobby Kremen's team was primed and ready to spoil the party. Tech was very impressive in building a 45-31 halftime lead in front of a stunned Assembly Hall crowd in Champaign. But the Illini stormed back behind Kenny Battle and Nick Anderson to win it in double overtime to rise to the number one rating in the national polls for the first time since 1953. I'm thrilled about it. I'm excited about it because I like the way our team gets after people. It feels great and all that, but you know, we're not going to let that get to our heads. We're going to still go out and play every day and as hard as we can. Got to keep our minds in perspective that we know we got a tough one coming up Thursday in Minnesota. And, you know, we just keep on doing what we've been doing you know, in the past, you know, just taking it game by game. I think we'll be all right. It was good last night after the victory, but now I realize that uh, we have to keep on working hard and, and do the things that got us to be number one to stay number one. It's something that I probably remember for a long time. You know, tell people that I, I played on a team that was number one in the country. So right now it's just a good feeling inside and out. Well, the jubilation of reaching the number one rating was dampened significantly by the injury to junior guard Kendall Gill, who broke the fifth metatarsal bone in his left foot in that Georgia Tech game. Following the injury, the Illini struggled losing three of the next four, and their stay at the number one spot lasted just a week. But mid-season ratings don't mean a whole lot, and the Illini had more important things on their minds, like bouncing back from their first loss suffered at Minnesota. That job would not be easy because the opposition was Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers, a team riding high on a 13-game winning streak and leading the Big Ten with an unbeaten record. Indiana led by 10 at halftime, but the Illini were 20 points better in the second half. On their way to a 75-65 victory, 
Kenny Battle scored 22, and Nick Anderson added 21 as the Illini handed the Hoosiers their first loss in the Big Ten. These kids really play hard. Uh, they go at things really hard. I said all the way back uh, in December that they were the best team in the country uh, because of the way they were set up. They were a good team last year. They were hard to play against last year. Uh, they've got everybody back, and, and uh, I think that, that they have uh, understood, and this is very important, I think that their kids have understood that they can be extremely good. They can be a really good basketball team, and they've gone at it uh, in that vein. Well, the Fighting Illini had some mid-season problems winning basketball games on the road. They suffered three straight losses away from the Assembly Hall. Two of those were four-point decisions at Purdue and at Iowa. The orange and blue went to East Lansing, Michigan, trying to get back on track on the road. The three-game Illinois road losing streak came to an end in a big way at Jenison Fieldhouse, where the Illini have played well in recent years. Marcus Liberty had his second straight outstanding game, scoring all 11 of his points in the first half, leading his team to a 41-28 halftime advantage. Illinois didn't let up at all in the second half as they pounded Judd Heathcote's Spartans 75-56 in East Lansing. After suffering their fourth loss of the season at Wisconsin, the Illini were ready for the stretch run of the Big Ten and looking for some revenge as Purdue came to town. Gene Cady's team never had a chance as Illinois used a 21-0 run in the first half to bag the Boilers. Three Illinois players scored 20 or more, with Liberty and Anderson netting 21 each and Battle chipping in with 20 in the 102-75 blowout. They did a super job uh, just uh, taking the ball in inside and uh, doing whatever they wanted to do with it. There wasn't much we could do about it. So they played an excellent game, and, and uh, they're getting better, and uh, hope they get Kendall back and they can do a tremendous job in the NCAA. We're getting better. We're improving. I want you to know for about three weeks, you cannot believe how we struggled. And some of you followed this, you know. This team is devastating there for a while, but we're beginning to get better. And that was bad news for Illini opponents. Following that big win over Purdue, it was back on the road for Illinois. A trip to St. John Arena in Columbus, Ohio, against the Ohio State Buckeyes in another one of those nationally televised contests. And basketball fans all across America were impressed by what they saw. Ohio State was hampered by the loss of all-star guard Jay Burson, who went out a week earlier with a serious neck injury. But Burson wouldn't have made much difference in this ball game as Nick Anderson took control of the contest, scoring a career-high 35 points to lead the Illini to an impressive 94-71 win over Gary Williams' Buckeyes. For Anderson, it was one of those rare days when almost everything went in. Every time I released it, it just felt like, hey, it was too... And you know, I was taking some good shots, and you know, they just fought. I was calling for it, and they was telling me to go get it. And uh, everything was just clicking at the right time. Saturday, ABC Sports brings you the Vintage Chrysler Invitational Golf Tournament. Yeah, you know, I was saying hi, mom. You know, when I got home, she said, Yeah, I seen you say hi, mom. You know what I did? I looked in the TV and said, Hi, Nick. <laughs> Nick certainly is an All-American basketball player with an All-American smile. The Illini beat Minnesota in Champaign before traveling to Bloomington, Indiana to meet Bob Knight's Hoosiers, who were trying to nail down the Big Ten title. But Nick Anderson and the Illini had other ideas on this day. The game was tied at 67 with two seconds left, and what happened in those final two seconds turned out to be the most memorable single play of the season. In fact, the most memorable single play in many, many years. watch TV, you know, I see sports and you know, I see it and I hear all the noise, you know, it's just something that I probably remember all the time. So we had a little trouble sleeping last night, huh? Well, I was thinking about the shot and I was, you know, I, I laughed to myself. I said, I made that shot, you know. It's just something that I never expected to happen. Did you talk to your mom about that shot at all? 
She calls me every hour. Every hour she talks about it. And you know, that's one of my biggest inspirations, my mother. I thought that Steve DeBardo did a good job by calling the timeout. Then he made the good pass to Nick, and Nick uh, squared around and uh, just made a fantastic shot. Nick having to break up to the side open. Uh, you know, there wasn't anybody on him at the time, so I threw it to him, and he spun and made the shot. And, uh, you know, it, it worked out as well as we could plan. Indeed it did. The win at Indiana was a very sweet one, and to make things even sweeter, it was time for Kendall Gill to return to action, just in time for the final two regular season games and the upcoming NCAA tourney. Gill was out for six weeks, and he came back against Iowa in the final game of the year at the Assembly Hall. The day before Gill's scheduled return, I talked to him, and as you might guess, he was really anxious to get back into action. Hey, I'm feeling great. I'm ready to go. I mean, the six weeks is over with now. I wanted to play yesterday, but, you know, unfortunately I couldn't. Uh, you know, but I, I'm just I'm just like I was at, when I was injured. You know, I'm fine now. Back to the old Kendall Gill again. No doubt about that. He returned to action early in the first half against Iowa, and it appeared he hadn't lost a step, just as he said, but he scored 15 points off the bench to help spark the Illini to a convincing and impressive 118-94 win over the Hawkeyes. I'm a little sore. I'm real tired right now. I feel like just falling out on the floor and just laying down because I haven't had that kind of workout in a long time. But, you know, I feel like everything is there. We played real well. It's good sending the seniors out like that. So, you know, I'm real pleased with the outcome. Also pleased with the outcome were two senior starters, Lowell Hamilton and Kenny Battle, who played their final game at the Assembly Hall before the sold-out crowd. That crowd gave them a long-standing ovation as they performed before the home fans for the final time. Well, the stage was set for the regular season finale against the Michigan Wolverines at Chrysler Arena up in Ann Arbor. As it turned out, the Illini handed the Maize and Blue their final loss of the season in what turned out to be Bill Frieder's last game in Ann Arbor. The Michigan fans at Chrysler Arena got a first-hand look at why they call them the Flying Illini as Illinois rang up eight dunks on the way to an 89-73 pasting of the Wolverines. Illini finished the regular season with a 27-4 record and a 14-4 mark in the Big Ten, good for second place behind Indiana. The 27 victories represented a school record, and the Illini had some momentum heading into the NCAA tourney. We'll cover postseason play when we continue after these words. Hey, I didn't think you going to be this good, but it feels good. <laughs> yes, good. Yes. Hey, down back in Champagne, baby, we did it. Illini entered the NCAA tournament as the number one seed in the Midwest region, much to the disbelief of Bob Knight and the Indiana fans. Knight felt his Big Ten champions deserved the top seed and should have been allowed to play in Indianapolis. But as we came to see, the NCAA committee knew exactly what it was doing. The Fighting Illini opened NCAA play at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis against McNeese State University of Louisiana. 
The orange and blue came away with a 77-71 win in a game that wasn't nearly as close as the final score might indicate. As you know, the Illini had struggled in recent years in the first or second round of the NCAA tourney, and they were out to get that monkey off their back this season. The Ball State Cardinals, with the best winning percentage in the country at 28-2, provided the second round opposition at the Hoosier Dome. Rick Majerus and the Cardinals had plenty of support since they were playing just an hour or so from their Muncie, Indiana campus. But the Illini wore them down on the way to a 72-60 victory at the Hoosier Dome to win a trip to the Metrodome in Minneapolis the following week. The Illini were favored in Minneapolis, but it didn't look good when Kenny Battle injured a knee at the first workout at the Metrodome, making his status for the semifinal game against Louisville in doubt. Battle slipped in a wet spot at the Dome and sprained a knee. He was able to play 13 minutes, but he was definitely hurting. To make matters even worse, fellow senior Lowell Hamilton sprained an ankle early in the game and could only play 15 minutes. Given those conditions, you probably wouldn't have been surprised to see the tough Louisville Cardinals eliminate the Illini. Well, that didn't come close to happening as the Illini broke open a close game late to route Denny Crum's team 83-69 to move into the Midwest Regional Finals. You know, all year we've been talking about, well, this team has something. They just go out and beat you, and I think we saw that tonight. Uh, uh, they just wouldn't die. They wouldn't die. Biggest win of the year? To me, it is. I don't know about everybody else, but beating Louisville and, you know, Coach Crum, it got to feel good, and I feel it. So the Fighting Illini were in the regional finals for the first time since 1984 when they lost to Kentucky on the Wildcats' home court in Lexington. This year's opponent, though, was Syracuse out of the Big East Conference. Hamilton was better, but his playing time was still limited due to the bad ankle. Battle, though, was back to his slam-dunking, ball-hawking, havoc cause himself. When the Orangemen jumped ahead by 13 points midway through the first half, many Illini fans were probably thinking, oh well, it was a heck of a year anyway, going to the regional finals and all. But Lou Henson has said all season long that this Illini team was the most courageous squad he's ever had, and it showed once again as the Orange and Blue stormed back Syracuse 89-86 to move into the NCAA Final Four for the first time since 1952. Battle scored 29 points while Nick Anderson added 24. Kendall Gill chipped in with 18 despite catching an elbow in the face in the early going. All three of those players were named to the alternate team with Anderson getting the most outstanding player award. We have a lot of heart, we have a lot of guts, and we go out and we fight for 40 minutes. And the thing about it, this team is not selfish and we're not quitters. It hasn't hit me. Uh, I'm happy, happy for the team, my teammates and all. But this is what we work for all year long, and you know, it really hasn't set in yet. Though. This one talks it off, this is since it's to the final four. You know, we were all hurt. Uh, you know, Kenny's knee, Lowe's ankle, my lip, but we put that aside. As far as my lip is hanging out, but I was still going to play. Um, I can't really talk that much, that well because uh, my lip needs stitches and everything. But, you know, I can't explain how I feel right now. It's just great. I gave it all I could give, so, you know, and hopefully that was good enough. Obviously, that was good enough anyway, so uh, I'm just happy we won. Everybody came out, worked hard, gave 110%. We can't ask for more than that. You have to knock them out or they'll come back on you. I can't think of a guy who deserves it more than yourself. Well, thank you, Steve. Yeah. Good luck. Do it. How are you feeling right now? Oh, I'm feeling quite elated, Steve. Just wonderful. So proud of our courageous players. I told your husband I can't think of anybody that deserves it more than he. Well, I think he deserves it, too, but those players, they have worked hard. They have given everything this season. They are the ones who deserve it. Well, champions of the Midwest Regional, it was a feeling that will long be remembered not only by the players and coaches, but by the thousands of Illini fans across Illinois and the nation. It was time to head to Seattle for the Final Four. We'll take you there coming up next on Illini Basketball, a special season. Urbana, Central Illinois, and the entire state had a case of Final Four fever. After the Illini beat Syracuse to win the Midwest Regional, Illinois had 31 wins in 35 games as the Illini prepared to do battle in Seattle. 
Despite some injuries, family illnesses, and other problems that could have taken their minds off basketball, the Illini nevertheless achieved their goal of making it to the Final Four. As Final Four fever set in, everyone wanted to know what the Illini had to say about the basketball season, even though almost every conceivable question had been asked dozens of times already. But Coach Henson and his ball players handled it very well and continued preparations for Seattle. They arrived to a nice welcome in the Emerald City where they had a couple of days to get ready for their semifinal meeting with the Michigan Wolverines who were riding high under interim coach Steve Fisher. Illinois was a slight favorite to beat the Maize and Blue for a third time this season, and the Illini got off to a pretty good start in the ball game, leading by eight in the early going. But Michigan came back before halftime, and it remained close the rest of the way. There were 33 lead changes in this ball game, the final one coming in the final seconds when Sean Higgins fired in a short rebound jumper to give Michigan an exciting 83-81 victory, sending the Wolverines into the title game and eventually onto the championship. The Illini knew they hadn't played their best game of the year, but they still played hard all the way and had a chance to win it. Sure, the loss was a disappointment, but that disappointment could not overshadow the special season. Hey, I had two great years here at the University of Illinois. I have nothing to regret. My senior year, we came out, we won 31 games, you know, and uh, we came to the Final Four. We had fun here, you know, we lost a crucial game, but uh, we just had to look back on the success we had. I know at the beginning of the year, nobody thought we were going to make it this far, and, uh, you know, we had a goal to get to the Final Four and, and win the championship, and we attained one of those goals, and it was good. You know, I just got to take it as that and just move on, but, uh, you know, I, I had a great time. It was, it was fun. I'm congratulating Low Hamilton and Kenny Battle for a great season, and I just like to say them, them two, two guys are some fighters. You know, they never gave up, and uh, I love them guys, and I hope them the best on whatever they go. Every time you lose some seniors like the West, like those two guys, you know, you lose them a lot, and uh, in terms of character and in terms of leadership, and uh, you know, we're really gonna miss them. Now, when you stop and think about it, you almost already miss Kenny Battle and Low Hamilton. The Atlanta got outstanding crowd support out in Seattle. About 3,000 Illinois fans made the long journey to the Emerald City. Wynn Smiley also made that trip, and he reports now on how the Illini fans handled the game and the city. <laughs> Illini faithful could not have been prouder. Chief Illini Wick was dancing, orange and blue was spilling all over Seattle, and the fighting Illini were in the final four. We've never had a season like this, and those kids in blue just deserve a tremendous amount of credit. of money being spent outplayed the alma mater and all other Final Four school songs combined. Illinois fans were not shy about contributing their fair share. Illinois has done well. Um, it's, you have to stay between Illinois and Duke as far as the hottest items in town right now. Seattle's economy will get a $47 million boost from the Final Four. More than t-shirt manufacturers knew this weekend's boom was coming. Been gearing up all week for this. The Long Lake, Washington, Pike Place Market extended its hours for a selling boom, along with a few fringe benefits. Do you like colors? The best Whoa, it's not quiet. In the world. I, I don't know about the, the well, final four, but I like the final two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> there were still a few fans who had not run into Cookie Cohen and remembered the reason for the weekend. Oh, probably go over and uh, see the coaches over at the Sheridan. You know, they've got, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's good to go see all the coaches, you know. So. Yeah. There's a collection there. We're, we're kind of concentrating pretty heavy on finding the ticket uh, oh. before we do, before we get into any sightseeing, you know. That's right. So still and, looking for tickets. Yeah, we're looking for tickets. By Saturday, priorities were back in place, and the Illini were warming up against Seattle's gray skies. That day, orange and blue never looked so bright. This is my lucky t-shirt. I had this on when we won the game Friday, and I had it on when we won Sunday, so I'm not taking it off until Monday night at 10 o'clock. The pep rally was a collection of Illini everything, modeled by more than willing fans. It's just that Illini spirit. It's in my blood, and it goes through to every, throughout, you know, every extremity. Well, I'm a trustee first, but I'm Illini also. 
I've got Lou's uh, 400th win on there. suit and a, and a white shirt, you know. At least I've got a sports coat on and an orange tie. That's that's kind of wild for me. I'm in the heart of uh, Razorback country, and I always tell them, I said, you can take the girl out of Illinois, but you can't take Illinois out of the girl. So uh, they try to keep converting me to the hogs. Compared to the rest of the crowd, the Illinois basketball band looked pretty tame. But presenting an Illini fashion statement was secondary to a much loftier goal. We get the team going, we get the crowds going, we just play and play and play. On Friday night, in a warehouse next to the Kingdom, a Seattle sportswear company threw a Final Four Bands bash. Illinois did not need to be asked twice. We all try to be nice for a day, and then we, then we go. Four days in class. Well, Michigan's a good band. Come on, Chuck. We're a little better. Let's go, Chuck. We're a lot better. But let me tell you. Chuck, 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 Chuck. Less than 24 hours later, the Illini partying during this basketball season was over. Seattle itself may have been the best medicine to help ease the Final Four disappointment. Illini fans took in the sights and sounds. For those of you who couldn't join us, here's a sample. It's a beautiful city. I, we were out here like, a, you know, 40 years ago, but uh, it's really changed. Dyke Edelman and, uh, knows what the day after feels there, like. 40 years ago, in a much smaller Seattle, he played on the Illini team that lost to Kentucky in the national semifinals. There's nothing our boys should be ashamed of. They played a great basketball game, and I'm sure they were thrilled to get here. Fans reluctantly began to accept that a bad bounce and last-second shot kept the fighting Illini out of the championship game. As the sting eased, reflections of a brilliant season were beginning to crowd out thoughts of Michigan. Great basketball game. It's too bad it had to end quite like that. It was just it just came down to the last the last basket, and that that was the way that's the way basketball games go. Anytime you get a team that makes it to the Final Four, how can you be upset? You know, uh, Illinois did a fine. Everybody wanted to see a good game last night, and that's probably the game of the tournaments was Michigan and, and Line Eye. Uh, what would have been a tragedy is to go out like Duke went out, <laughs> you know, get blown out. Illinois did a good job last night. Uh, Michigan had a lot of reasons to win. Uh, you know, they played us twice, and we'd beat them twice. Uh, 
it's hard to go three for three. Seattle welcomed Illini fans with open arms as March Madness peaked. The city helped Illinois hype up for the Final Four and then provided a beautiful setting to ease the disappointment of ending the season. Illini fans deserve a lot of credit this basketball season. Not only those of you who traveled to Seattle for the Final Four, but all the fans, especially those who packed the Assembly Hall to welcome the flying Illini home from Seattle. It was another night to remember in a season filled with memories. Making it to the Final Four of the NCAA Tournament does a lot for a basketball program and the entire university. It's a tremendous recruiting point, it develops pride in the program, and it's financially rewarding. I spoke with Illinois Athletic Director John McAvick about some of the many benefits generated by this Illini basketball team. More than anything, I think Lou Henson is being appreciated for the outstanding coach he is. First of all, anyone who's won 500 plus games can coach basketball. Everyone says, gee, it's great you made all this money, and it is, and we'll take the money, and we probably have it already spent. But the key thing is you're playing for pride and accomplishment, and I think that's really what the basketball tournament can do. It allows everybody to play for the number one spot, and we were in the final four of those, and so we have to be pretty proud of that. Well, speaking of all that money, how much are we talking about by going to the final four? I'm not sure exactly what it is. In our conference, we split money and so what you do is you take 50 percent and then the other 50 percent goes to the other nine schools would it be safe to say that it was probably somewhere over a million dollars no it was no. not that much okay. no it's it's six hundred thousand plus but okay. it's not i'm almost positive it will not be that high as you mentioned even more importantly is is what it does for the entire university yeah, i think more than anything people really were excited and i don't know if you had a chance to be in the assembly hall uh, when the team came back for the homecoming celebration, the electricity and the excitement of that, and the really just adulation of so many people, and those who couldn't get there, and those who decided to watch it on TV, that says something about not only the team, but our fans and all that it's meant. Well, this season certainly has meant a lot to basketball fra uh, fans across the state. It will be a season to remember and a season by which future Illini teams are compared. We'll have more in our look back on Illini basketball coming up after these words. Of course, there were plenty of honors for the Fighting Illini basketball team this past season. 
course, being rated the number one team in the country for that week back in uh, February was certainly one of those honors. Nick Anderson, Kenny Battle, and Kendall Gill were all three named honorable mention All-America. Anderson was a first-team All-Big Ten pick with Kenny Battle on the second team, while Gill and Lowell Hamilton made third-team All-Big Ten. And for the 67th straight season, the Champaign-Urbana Kiwanis Club honored this Illini basketball team. That banquet was held earlier this week. No, I said, I said they didn't. A record crowd of more than 700 people showed up to pay tribute to the Illini in the 67th annual Kiwanis Awards Banquet. Junior Nick Anderson was named the team's most valuable player, and Nick took some time to squelch a rumor. You know, looking at what people say, well, is Nick leaving? You know, who made up the room? I want to meet him outside. <laughs> No, I just, I think I'm a smarter guy than that. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing next year. You know, that's, uh, I think any smart player would do that, and I think I'm that type of player. I would like to thank all of you for the support you've given us, and next year, same type of support, same type of players, and hopefully we'll be in Denver. I'd just like to say, you know, thanks for all your support this year. Uh, it's, it's great to see that uh, the, the University of Illinois has the greatest fan support in the term, tournament. That was obvious this year. And I'd like to say thanks to the guys for, for all their help and, and making our uh, season so great. And once again, I'd just like to thank you all, and hopefully we can get to Denver next year and win it. <laughs> uh, I would just like to thank every, everyone for coming out. Uh, like they said before, I think this is the largest uh, turnout that they've had before and um, I think this is uh, a reflection of how you all followed us throughout the year and uh, without your help we couldn't win as far as we did and uh, hopefully next year we can have the same type of support and uh, even win it next year. Thank you. There's nothing that matches the NCAA basketball tournament. To be part of it is exciting. To win in one game and then two is really exciting. To get to the regionals, the thrill of being in Minneapolis and being part of the team, and just the excitement that was part of that arena when they had those thousands of people there was something that most people will never forget. And then to finally get to the Final Four, to say that we've made it to a position that only four of us in the country have made, is beyond most people's wildest expectations. You play to be the best. You play to see who's the champion. And we came a little short, but in our hearts, I don't think any of us is disappointed one iota in the quality of leadership, the quality of play, how hard we played, how great a defense we played. This is their night to be honored and to share in a celebration. I'm very thankful to be part of it. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Uh, we love you very much, and we really, truly appreciate all you've done. Those sentiments were echoed by a record crowd, as we mentioned, at the Kiwanis Banquet. 725 people showed up. That was about twice as many as they had last year. You know, now that the basketball season is over, Coach Lou Henson is even busier, if you can believe it, as he's out on the recruiting trail. The next couple of weeks are very important as the Illini build to the future. Between recruiting stops, I sat down with the coach to get his views on this record-breaking season. And as you might guess, he has many fond memories of the flying Illini. Steve, we've had a lot of ball clubs over the last uh, 34 years, and uh, uh, many of those ball clubs were very special. As a matter of fact, all of them, but uh, we've never had a team more exciting than the Fighting Illini this year. Uh, uh, this ball club seemed to uh, catch on throughout the nation. We received cards, letters, telephone calls uh, uh, from people all over the nation uh, talking about this team. We were on national TV several times, and they saw this team play. They saw them with a full-court defense, the pressure-type defense. Uh, they also saw them running, scoring a lot of points. Uh, and there, we have a lot of exciting individuals. So uh, this team caught on, and uh, I've told everybody uh, this is America's team. When you look back at this year, is there, is there one game or one point in time that really stands out in your mind? Well, there were a lot of games that really stood out, uh, or they stand out in my mind. Uh, I know that the game at Missouri, when we were down 18, it looked like we may be blown away. They came back and uh, won that ball game. The Georgia Tech game, they came back and, and won that one uh, after being down 16 in the second half. The game here against Indiana was a great one. We were down 10, then we came on strong to win it by 10. And then the game over at Indiana, that was a great one. 
because uh, I'll always remember that, Steve, because that's a game that, where I designed the play where we scored. Now, I've told Nick Anderson, anybody can make the shot once they get the play. So it, it was a great game, and uh, Nick did a super job in that ball game. And, then, of course, you have to look to the regionals. In the regionals, we had two players out, or two seniors were out, and that team came on to win uh, easily uh, uh, toward the end of the ball game. So it was a great one. Then we had uh, uh, Lowell Hamilton out uh, in the last game on Sunday, and, uh, and we won that battle, had a great game, 28 or 29 points. So uh, uh, that tournament was a great tournament. It was a very emotional tournament, and uh, uh, it was unbelievable unreal how they would fight you down to the wire and you know I've said about the game against Michigan uh, that final game we weren't beaten there Steve time just ran out on us and I really mean that had we had any time at all I think this team would have found a way to win uh, uh, they're a gutty crew uh, uh, they would not accept defeat and they fought until the end you had to knock them out they would not die you know, that's the element of this Illini basketball team that I'll remember for a long time. You may have them down, but if you didn't knock them out, you were in trouble because they were always going to come back. That's what made this group such a special group and this such a special season. And I'll be back to wrap things up after this word. Well, I certainly hope you've enjoyed looking back at the 1988-89 Fighting Illini basketball season half as much as you enjoyed watching the games themselves this past winter. It certainly was a season to remember, a very special basketball season Illini fans will have in their minds for a long, long time. I'm Steve Kelly. Have a good night.